I'm Brian. At 58, doctors told me I had the heart of a 37-year-old man. They told me that after my heart transplant surgery. If you're a smoker, here are some tips in case that happens to you. First, you have to quit smoking before you can get on a list for a transplant. So quit now. And never feel sorry for yourself. I don't. I only feel sorry for that 37-year-old man. Developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For help quitting, call 866-QUIT-YES or visit quityes.org. Support for WDBX comes from Mike's Music of Carbondale. Mike's Music offers services on all stringed instruments from string changes to neck and body repair, upgrades, and customization. Mike's also buys, sells, and trades all types of musical instruments and equipment and offers private one-on-one instruction for guitar, bass, and piano. Mike's Music at 816 East Main Street in Carbondale or on Facebook, 618-529-3444. Monday morning. It is 10.01, or now 10.02 a.m. This is WDBX FM Carbondale, specifically Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Amy Fox, with the City of Carbondale. And I'm joined in studio this morning with Skip Cosgrove with uh, Toys for Tots. You are the Carbondale coordinator. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us this morning. Thanks for inviting me, and good morning. And uh, first off, um, tell us a little bit about uh, Toys for Tots and how you guys got your start here in southern Illinois. Well, Toys for Tots is a national organization. It was started in 1947 by the Marine Corps Reserve. Actually, it was started by a wife of a a then major that was in the uh, Marine Corps. And then the Marine Corps Reserve uh, saw the value in it and picked it up and has been conducting it ever since. And you guys have a new location this year um, for distribution. Yeah, thanks to the generosity of the city of Carbondale, we have a new facility that um, allows us to expand um, the program and thereby more children getting a benefit of having um, uh, getting a toy for Christmas. And tell us a little bit about how the community can get involved and lend a helping hand during the holiday season. There's several ways, probably, uh, depending on what person's interest is. One, of course, is a donation of a toy. Uh, we accept uh, new unwrapped toys, or they can give a monetary donation, which we then use to supplement uh, the toy donations, because there's, there's always some toys that we don't receive adequate numbers of generally for the, uh, the teenagers, the older kids that we, uh, we give out toys to, uh, we don't get a lot of donations for them. Everybody seems to like to buy them for the three, four, five-year-olds, you know, but uh, the older kids, we don't get as many donations. Or they can conduct a fundraising event, which we will uh, participate in with them, and, um, and, and those do happen. Are there specific types of toys that you look for or just anything that's brand new? Anything that's new. Um, we try to stay away from um, um, specifying what kind of toy uh, because it's up to the interests of the donor, uh, whatever they would choose to buy. And then a lot of, some of that has to do with what their ability to buy one is. So uh, we gratefully accept any toy, any new unwrapped toy that uh, people are willing to give. And where do you have drop-off locations specifically here in Carbondale? We have 68, at, no, 69 as of this morning, mm-hmm. uh, uh, drop-off locations throughout Carbondale. We have them at professional offices like Dogwood Dental and uh, Woodard uh, Chiropractic. We have them at banks. We have them at um, uh, major department stores like Walmart. Uh, we have them at other professional offices, accounting firms, investment firms. Uh, we have one at the City of Carbondale at City Hall. Uh, so it, it's fairly easy to um, find a box. 
but they can also uh, always call us, and uh, we'd be happy to p pick up because I know some people don't have the ability to drive all over the place to to find a box. And in addition to donations of money or toys, you also need a lot of volunteers to make all of this possible. Yeah, we're pretty much from the uh, 1st of November till about the middle of January where it's Toys for Tots every day. Um, uh, whether it's a fundraiser or whether it's getting the new building uh, sort of lined out and we're still going through that process. Um, or it's sorting, picking up toys, sorting toys, bagging toys, answering the phone, so on and so forth. So um, there's generally someone there um, every day except for the weekends. But as far as working on toys, but I'm usually there on the weekends uh, doing something in relation to the building. And there is a large need in the community in every holiday season that tends to go up. Uh, I mean, some of the statistics are really eye-opening for a lot of people. We've seen um, a rise of about 10% annually. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, uh, we, we've, through the generosity of people in the community, we've been able to meet those needs. Uh, so a 10% rise doesn't sound like very much, but when you're talking about, uh, you know, 10,000 toys last year, over 10,000 toys last year in the five-county area that we cover, which Carbondale is, is uh, percentage-wise, is, is well over a third of, of the toys that are collected and distributed. And um, what is the reaction from families who do receive um, some of these gifts for their kids? It's grateful. They're very grateful. Uh, people, uh, there's a lot of people that have a really hard time th trying to provide a Christmas gift. So uh, that's where we hope to step in and, and be able to help them out. We have the national philosophy for Toys for Tots is we don't we don't question um, whether um, uh, someone should get a toy or not, or, or we don't uh, try to validate a request. If someone calls us and says they need toys, we give toys. And how do p families um, get in touch with you folks um, if they do need some assistance this holiday season? The call-in number to register your children to receive toys is 618-529-1299. And that phone is answered uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And there's a, a lot of need in the community, whether it's toys or coats, which we'll get into during our next um, interview segment. Um, but what makes it so rewarding to you um, to, to give back to the community? Well, everybody should give back to the community that they live in. Um, and the rewarding part for me is, is seeing uh, someone that would, would get something for Christmas that they normally wouldn't have the capability of receiving. Uh, or they don't have the wherewithal financially to cover that. You know, there's a lot of demands on people's income. And so uh, what we try to do is, is take one of, those, one of those demands away and make it easier for them to do that. And to me, that's satisfying. Uh, you know, I've had people come up to me and tell me that when I, they were a child that if it wasn't for Toys for Tots, they wouldn't have had a Christmas. So that, that's the motivator. And it's a great way to get the community to rally behind your organization and just to see all these different drop off sites and to see the the bins filled with toys um, come a couple weeks from now it's pretty amazing that uh, people are so generous in the community it's very amazing and you know i talk to people and they, they do um they do fun drives and toy drives within their business at, the, at whether it's a bank or a professional office they give discounts on whatever service that they offer or they have special days where employees can and can give toys and they also just encourage their their customers uh, to come in and bring toys and uh, they seem to have a lot of fun doing it you know mm -hmm. and then I, I try to help them out as much as I can um, to make to help them accomplish that so the genera the key is the generosity of the community and the community has been very generous and um, if someone wants to take advantage of this program um, they can sign up now through when November 30th November 30th, so time is quickly uh, coming to an end, right. and um, then the pickup day is in December then. Yes, all of our pickup days are in December, 
Uh, the one for Carbondale is on the 15th of December, and it'll be at our new location um, at uh, 606 and a half East College Street. Uh, and then we have several others, depending on what community that we're doing it in. Uh, now, going back to that November 30th date, that's the sort of the published um, deadline, but we commonly will receive toys uh, requests up through Christmas Eve. And we have um, provided toys afterwards, too, for people who have a house fire or some sort of family emergency that um, they didn't plan on. So um, we'll try to accommodate anybody, and, um, and as long as it's a reasonable request. And what happens behind the scenes um, between November 30th and those December uh, pickup days? We have a lot of volunteers that come in, and they'll, they'll, they'll take a name off of a stack, and it could be a family of, of one child. It could be as many as seven or eight children. And what they do then, we know their, the child's uh, name, we know their age, and we know their ethnicity. Uh, so then from the toys that have been donated, um, either from the national organization or locally, or those that we've had to buy, then those volunteers will go about picking out toys that are appropriate for that child. And we put them in a bag, and it's numbered. And then when the people come to pick it up, we know what bag goes with that request. So they, it's, a, it's, a pretty, a, it's a pretty seamless process for the people that come and get it. They walk in, they show identification. Um, we check our master list. We go get a bag with their number on it, hand it to them, and it's done. And um, anything else you would like to add? I know your uh, new facility on college um, has allowed you to kind of spread out um, and be a little bit more organized, if you would. <laughs> Very much so. We went from about, um, oh, a thousand, maybe eleven hundred square feet that we were functioning in to over seven thousand square feet. So it allows us to uh, really keep toys separated and display them more. Makes it easier to bag the toys and select toys to give to the children, uh, depending on you know what the criteria is. So it's been uh, a very, very good thing for us, and we're very grateful to the city. And you guys will be in there for ten years. Ten years. 10 years, hopefully longer. I don't know if I'll still be around in 10 years, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens. And how long have you been involved in this organization? I've been involved for almost 15 years. Wow. And you've seen the need continue to go up. It goes up every year. But then we, we try to make it go up. You know, mm -hmm. we try to be more aggressive in, in getting toys uh, donated and and getting the word out so that people can uh, participate in the program. And you have a lot of great community partners who have made large donations in terms of giving you toys. Giving us toys and then also doing fundraisers. We just did a fundraiser on Saturday that's been a tradition uh, in the uh, in the Murdale Shopping Center and um, people are aware of it. They know that it's coming up. It, the date changes every year depending mm -hmm. on the availability of, of the business that, that uh, conducts it. But um, we have a lot of people that give us uh, a lot of toys, and, and, and generally they're, um, they're very needed. And I know we mentioned um, several of the locations, specifically in Carbondale, where people can donate toys. Um, but for a complete list of locations throughout southern Illinois, um, where can people go? Um, it would probably, well, there's no list that's published. Okay. Um, they would have to make a phone call to either uh, the registration number or uh, call me, and, and um, I could get a hold of them. Now, I'm not very well informed on where all the boxes are in places like Carterville and Heron and Marion and, and Harrisburg, Benton, some of those places, but those are counties. We cover a five-county area in southern Illinois, um, so there's other volunteers that take care of that. Um, I pretty much focus on, on Carbondale. And um, we are running out of time on our interview, but one last time, this is Skip Cosgrove with Toys for Tots, and you are in the heart of your busy season yeah. with your organization. Yeah. 
Um, and if someone is listening this morning who either would like to donate or would um, like to receive assistance this holiday season, how can they get in touch with you? They can call my my personal phone at 618-967-9462, and I'll be happy to uh, try to accommodate their requests. The best piece of advice, the sooner you can get a hold of Skip, the better. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, I'm not a... I'm not a crisis management kind of person. I like to plan in advance. So um, if people can give me enough time to be able to uh, work with their request, I would appreciate that. Great. Lots of good information. Anything I forgot to ask you maybe you'd like to add? Well, it's Toys for Tots season, and uh, let's make it another banner year. All right. Thanks so much for joining me this morning, and best of luck with fundraising efforts. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm going to take a short break and get you some announcements, and I'll be right back. Good morning, this is Alicia with the City of Carbondale here to bring you this week's calendar of events. The CCHS Band is holding their annual Christmas tree sale. Their new location this year is at the Carbondale High School off Giant City Road. They will have 300 trees, some fir and some pine of all heights are available. They will be open beginning November 23rd at 12 p.m. through December 14th at 8 p.m. Their hours of operation are Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sundays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, please call 618-559-8027. And on Friday, November 23rd, 2018, the Varsity will show the film The Sound of Music beginning at 7 p.m. Tickets are $7 or $5 for students. For more information about the showing of this film, please call 618 457 5353. For information on these events and others, please visit our website at wdbx.org or carbondeltourism.org or you can reach us by phone at 618-457-3228. Thank you and have a great week. Good morning. It is 1017 a.m. on your Monday. You're listening to WDBX FM Carbondale, specifically Talk of the Town. We hope you're having a wonderful start to your day. And I'm joined by Jeff Grubbs, the Carbondale Police Chief. Thanks so much for joining me in studio this morning. Good morning. And you are in the midst of your annual Coats for Kids drive. If you want to tell me a little bit about how you guys got your start with this particular fundraiser. Well, Coats for Kids is an overall part of our community Christmas store, and this will be our 13th year. And so we used to do Shop with a Cop, and we were able to facilitate uh, Christmas gifts for around 30 children. And so uh, Susie Tolliver, who is our crime victim advocate at the police department, uh, came up with the idea for the community Christmas store and specifically a way to try to serve more children and more families. So about 13 years ago, um, we began the Christmas store, and around four years ago, uh, we teamed up with uh, Saluki Athletics uh, to add a coat component to that Christmas store, wherein uh, you know coats were always a part of one of the gifts that the, that the parents could select for their children. Uh, but we wanted to be able to add a coat for every child. Um, that we serve and so that is kind of how Coats for Kids was born and again Saluki Athletics um, we teamed up with them they are our primary drop off site at all men's and women's home games during the month of November and in early December um, you know this effort uh, uh, also allows for drop offs at uh, both our police department and the SIU police department 24 hours a day and why Coats? Well, we're obviously in that season where we want to make sure that the kids uh, are able to stay warm uh, during those winter months and, uh, you know, make that uh, a, a priority and, uh, uh, you know, do our part uh, to try to help out with the broader community. And do you have a target number of how many coats you're looking to collect this year or the, as many as you can get? <laughs> we always have more children on our waiting list than we're able to serve. And uh, so that's why we leverage, um, you know, the Toys for Tots programs and, and try to do referrals. But 
the important part about our program is is that that Susie um, does a very good job of making sure that that we're primarily focused on families that aren't receiving services from other social service agencies. So uh, with that said, without this program, these children wouldn't receive Christmas gifts and they certainly wouldn't receive a new coat. But uh, we we try to do, our goal has always been 100 families. We upped Mm -hmm. that last year to 125. We already have 125. Uh, families on that list and an additional 30 plus as of today and we only opened up the program last Monday so we have already exceeded um, uh, where we want to be or or are able to be not where we want to be Uh, so we will be doubling down our efforts to try to get more donations uh, to see that all of those children uh, at a minimum receive a new code so families come to the police department and sign up for they can contact Susie Tolliver Mm -hmm. at s Tolliver at explorecarbondale.com they can uh, call the police department at uh, 457-3200 extension 447 is Susie's extension if you can't remember that then just ask for Susie Tolliver she is uh, what I've always referred to especially this time of year uh, but throughout the year as one of those angels in our community that touches so many people in so many ways, and we're, we're very lucky to have her. And the families that do receive coats do get to come to the community um, Christmas store. Um, some very, very um, thankful people. So the unique part mm-hmm. about this is is that, uh, that, that we, Susie, and, mm-hmm. uh, and we, she gets help, obviously, from other staff members in, in the department and also... Uh, when we open the store from the advocates at both the state's attorney's office and the sheriff's office to help her. But uh, but everything is neatly sorted and mm-hmm. uh, and ready to go. And so the parents get basically uh, times where they can come in and do their shopping for their children just mm-hmm. like they would at any other store. And, um, and they get to wrap the presents if mm-hmm. they want to, or we will assist them and wrap them for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it... Uh, there's a lot of laughs. There's a lot of tears, a lot of emotions during that time of the season when, uh, when folks are receiving assistance when they didn't necessarily think that they were going to be able to provide that uh, um, Christmas time magic that uh, that every kid deserves. And you'll be collecting coats now through December. Certain cutoff date for coats? We never have a cutoff date. Okay. And uh, you know the coats that we aren't able to to use based on sizing or whatnot will be available. Uh, for our waiting lists and uh, um, you know we are very thankful our our primary sponsor is Walmart mm-hmm. and uh, but also this year um, the Carbondale Kiwanis and the Carbondale Lions Club have both stepped up and said that they wanted to be a part uh, in this program and help us so our three our three primary sponsors now Walmart Carbondale Kiwanis Carbondale Lions Club and this is really a community effort and the community supports this and continues to put coats on kids hey once we partnered with mm-hmm. saluki athletics this became a regional event while it may primarily focus on carbondale children because each of the communities has their own mm-hmm. piece of what they do whether it's shop with a cop or whether it's a community christmas store at the carbondale police department but uh, we have people from all over the region bringing coats uh, to the upper concourse before those basketball games, those men's and women's games, uh, all throughout the month of November and December. Um, the uh, athletics program provides uh, student athletes who aren't a part of those basketball teams uh, to help receive the coats, mm-hmm. so that counts towards some of their community service. Uh, you know, we're lucky to have them, and, and, and uh, we're very thankful um, that they allowed us to team up with them. Um, to provide a broader a broader effort and what's the best part of this experience for you because i know there's a lot of hard work and um efforts that go into planning this and then actually implementing it and making it happen but what makes it so rewarding to you chief hey you know i, I kind of get out and and i get to talk about it and try to to uh get some support behind the program uh whether it's uh, you know, with the former athletic director or current athletic director, 
you know, but the heart of the program, you know, and the credit goes to Susie Tolliver. And so I'm just out there trying to support her, support her effort, the overall effort of the police department, and to make sure that the children of our community that wouldn't otherwise receive Christmas gifts or new coats get to have a better Christmas. And if someone's listening to this interview this morning, um, sizes that you're looking for? So we focus primarily on uh, children that are from one year's to eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot more of the smaller coats than we do the larger coats. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but the stores are very good in allowing us to exchange for sizes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the monetary donations, um, a large part of that is held towards the end of the program so that we can supplement with coats that we may be short on, on sizes. We traditionally receive more uh, requests for male children than we do for female, and we, and we typically get more uh, of the smaller sizing coats than we do the larger. Um, and, uh, you know, some people simply want to provide monetary donations. And, again, Susie Tolliver at the police department is the primary person to coordinate that, and, uh, and we can get uh, folks receipts for those funds that they decide to donate so that they can use it for tax credit as well. And in addition to coats, do you look for hats and mittens and scarves and those types of things? We do, but, but primarily mm -hmm. those, we, we would ask, you know, if you don't want to donate a coat, we would ask you to, to provide a monetary donation mm -hmm. uh, because the advocates do a real good job of vetting what uh, is needed as a part of the program, whether it's clothing, whether it's toys, uh, you name it, and we try to match up the desires uh, of the parents with the needs of the children. So once again, Coats for Kids um, continuing for the 13th year now, and you are still collecting coats now through December 8th at the basketball games, but you'll continue to take donations at the police department beyond that. Yes, obviously this is the time of year where, we're, where we have our biggest push that comes here during the Thanksgiving week and the weeks after. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we certainly uh, appreciate any support um, that we can receive for this important program. And if someone's listening and would like to make a donation, Susie Tolliver, the main point of contact for this project. Right. S. Tolliver at Car ExploreCarbondale.com or 457-3200, extension 447. Or just ask for Susie. Everybody knows her name. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Anything else you'd like to add, Chief Grubbs? Maybe I forgot to ask you. Just wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, uh, a wonderful Christmas season. Great. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for today. We hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend, and we'll be right back next Monday morning. Have a great day. This hour of programming on WDBX Carbondale is sponsored in part by your membership contributions and by The Thrift Shop. The Thrift Shop is located just north of the Strip at 215 North Illinois Avenue in Carbondale, offering a variety of new, used and vintage clothing, furniture, household items, books, toys, shoes, and more. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., The Thrift Shop is a nonprofit organization serving our community since 1967. They always accept donations, and any donations that are not sold will be recycled if possible. The Thrift Shop, 457-6976. This hour of programming on WDBX Carbondale is sponsored in part by your membership contributions and by Tree Bark Tree Care. Tree Bark Tree Care, arborist for your tree's health care. 
Tree Bark Tree Care offers total tree care. Spring is the time to remove undesirable trees, overgrown shrubs, unsightly brush piles, and unwanted tree stumps. Tree Bark Tree Care is a proud supporter of community radio. Tree Bark Tree Care, 549-8173. Support comes from Work Care, providing free employment physicals, drug testing services, injury management, OSHA exams, wellness and this prevention service. Learn more at workcarereadywell.com.